guys, I am hanging out with Danielle, and Danielle is a, uh, I don't know if I'm allowed to say badass, but badass <laughs> snake catching rescuer, or I snake say lady, I'm, snake a, I'm the snake lady, Danielle I'm a the snake, lady. snake wrestler, um, wrestler, wrangler. <laughs> she wrestles rattlesnakes, she's, she's super awesome. Um, what we're doing here today, guys, is we got a bunch of rattlesnakes that actually need to go back out in the wild. Um, these are snakes that basically, people have called up and they said, hey, Danielle, there's a rattlesnake in my yard. I'm worried about my kid. I'm worried about my dog. I'm freaking mm -hmm. out, right? They're calling Absolutely. you probably scared. Terrified. And you go out to their house, you save the day. And the ones we're releasing here today are ones that need to be moved to another location where it's safer for them. Absolutely. Safer for everyone involved. So Danielle, what do we got here? Well, we have a speckled rattlesnake. It's the most common rattlesnake I'm called out for. Why is that? They live in the boulders. A lot of those out here. This little guy was found on someone's patio. We don't really like that here in the high desert. We want our people and our snakes safe. So I get called to humanely relocate these beautiful creatures away from people and letting them continue their life eating away all those rodents. Stunning animal. This is pretty calm. Very calm. These animals get a really nasty reputation for being aggressive. And that's just not the case. These are defensive animals. They're terrified of us. Just as terrified as you are of them. As soon as this snake realizes I'm not posing a threat to its safety, it, it is very calm compared to what most people would think. You can hear a little bit of a rattle, which is their warning, but no, that's mostly you. It's mostly, it's that's just me, yeah. You doing the rattle. You so this rattle. snake isn't, isn't feeling like its life is being threatened any longer. And so he is just behaving like any normal snake. Curious, but also wanting to get away. How old do you think this snake is? Uh, at least a couple years old. These snakes start out really teeny tiny when they're babies. It would take a lot of meals and a lot of sheds to get this size. But this snake is still very small compared to its uh, size that it could get. I've seen this snake up into about four and a half feet. And they are strong, big, and beautiful. And he sees those nice rocks behind you. Can probably smell all those rodents with all that rodent poop everywhere. He's ready to go catch himself some dinner. Oh yeah. So we're out in the desert. This is Landers, <laughs> California. Um, what types of snakes do you find out here? Um, we find obviously a lot of rattlesnakes. Like I said earlier, I get called out for the speckle rattlesnake more often than not because it's just a very populated snake out here. And, um, but we also have the very venomous Mojave rattlesnakes with the two types of venom. And again, with most of the rattlesnakes, they have a bad reputation, but these animals are not going to come attack you. We also have sidewinders, red diamonds, uh, many different kinds of non-venomous snakes, uh, primarily gopher snakes, rosy boas, red racers, aka coach whips. Um, most snakes out here have a nickname or two. People call them Mojave and Mojave Green. People just sometimes call this the rock snake, the boulder snake, but like I said, it's a speckled rattlesnake and very obvious why that's the case because it blends in so well with the spotted rocks out here. Oh, yeah. He's just demonstrating so perfectly how calm these animals truly a can lot of be. People, a lot of people freak out when they see rattlesnakes. They freak out and yeah. they want to kill them. These snakes and will so not attack you. you'll see on the you. internet a lot, you'll see people, oh, they posted a hitcher, they bashed in the rattlesnake head. And mm -hmm. They're super proud, they're super tough, that they, you know, they, they did it in the rattlesnake. But, mm -hmm. you just pick them up and Literally. move them. And I'm not saying that everybody, don't do that. Don't attempt to do that. Call Danielle. Call Danielle. Yes, um, please call But me. they can be moved and they can be relocated into place. They're they're not out to get us, guys. They're not out to get us. Um, they're just doing what they do. Um, so it's better if we just uh, share the share the planet with them and move them to a safer place where Absolutely. kids aren't going to run into them, dogs aren't going to run into them, all that good stuff. Absolutely, and you don't really have to worry about the same snake returning. The reality is, when I move a snake no more than one mile. There are always snakes closer to your home than the one I just moved. So it's always smart 
to keep an eye out. Never let your guard down. Don't put your hands and feet places you can't see. Because these snakes aren't out to get you. They won't come and attack you, but you might accidentally get too close, and that scares them. And the snake's not coming towards me to attack me. Again, it is smelling those rodents behind me. It is seeing that coverage, and that's all it wants to escape. Guys, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to help Danielle here. Danielle has picked out this really, really cool spot for the snake. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let him go right into, right into this crevice here. Now, Danielle, why did you like this spot? I love this spot because it shows rodent activity, the primary food source of these animals, and deep coverage of rocks, so that way predators can't get to this animal. So we're going to go ahead and go ahead and put him down here. Go. There he goes. They know exactly what to do. So what kind of predators do these guys face out here? Uh, so many predators. We have the owls, the any bird of prey, coyotes, bobcats, roadrunners especially, uh, mountain lions, pretty much anything bigger than that rattlesnake can eat that rattlesnake and they happily will. Better to move them way out of their territory and still allow them the chance to maybe survive in the wild than it is to just chop them in half and no more rats get eaten. Because there's nobody out here. No, there is no one. And this can... is, like I said, only we're 0.4 miles away currently from where it was caught. And, you know, you move it not even a mile, and it's so far away from people, it, it's not a threat anymore. And if you kill a snake on your property, you're not decreasing your chance of having another one at all. They're everywhere. We just got to learn how to live with them and safely. Because, you know, sticking that snake back, back out here and letting it do its rodent control is going to help everyone in these cities in the long run because as everyone knows rats are a major problem out here especially with the and they can often carry diseases oh yes and just the amount of damage they cause uh, to car wires to homes everything and, you know with people comes more rodents more trash and uh people killing snakes just make those predators of the the rodents just decline and therefore rodents and putting poison out you might have another animal that might eat that poison yeah come along like you'll and say, kill one rat there's a food but... chain and you're exactly. thinking you're just killing the rat but really you're Literally killing a couple everything. other animals along the line everything and that owl that died from ingesting that rodent poison would have killed 400 rats by the end of the month and you just killed one rat so so what we're gonna do now guys is we're gonna oh uh oh we hear a rattle got a rattle there Someone's spooked. She's spooked because moving around, obviously. Yeah, this is actually a boy. It's a boy? You're a boy. How can you tell? Uh, the, the length of the tail past the cloaca. It's an educated guess, but generally the longer tails um, past the cloaca are males and the shorter tails are female. It's not foolproof. You can also count the scales at the bottom past the cloaca, a.k.a. the poop shoot. And, um... Yeah, it's not perfect, but it's... But to your best guess. But to my best guess, yes. Otherwise, you do have to go internally yeah, to, that's, that's to so find that, the pockets. I, I got taught to... I was impressed that you uh, you had a guess <laughs> without having done that. that. I want to get All right, to so any sand. We're way. hiking out here. We're out in the desert. Got some, we got some Joshua trees out here. Yes. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and see if we can find a good spot. To put this guy, but we don't see. I don't see any rocks. I don't see no, any rocks. So I see a lot of barren. In particular, there's a lot of barren. Barren is good for this snake. Um, they like the softer sand because they can burrow down into it and become okay. even more camouflaged. Um, so we're not looking for rocks. This time. No, in this territory for sidewinders and Mojaves, it's usually a little bit okay. more flat. What plant is that? That is a joya. This is what you don't want to touch. This choya is gnarly. These whole buds will come off. These needles are razor sharp. They're like hypodermic needles. They are terrible. This is the last desert cacti you want to run into. Like literally it will break off and stick to you and it is agonizing. 
Because so in this territory, any hole that you see is a hole that this would occupy. We're not far enough away yeah, there, from the There road. are tons of holes, so there's a hole exactly. here. Exactly. But these be... are the holes that those little mice are coming in out. Absolutely. Because no snake out here is going to be digging its own tunnels like this. It is just occupying the holes of other rodents. And um, so in this case, anywhere that you see a hole, there could be a snake down any one of these holes. And that's why the Mojaves, especially because they're green tint, they blend in well with this green shrubbery. And you don't even see them at the base of these plants. And there's rodent holes everywhere, constant food moving in and out. So like something like this, so perfect. Because A, this snake is usually out at night. So this snake is not naturally going to want to really stay out right now. So down in a hole like this, nice coverage. Ideally, I'd probably get a, a thicker bush, but there's just so many tunnel networks here. I think this would be a good spot too. Sandy, not rocky, plenty of coverage, clearly rodent activity. So yeah, this would be Makes ideal. Good meals for him. Oh yes, this guy's just eating mice, but hey, he's doing his part. And he camouflages with the sand very, very well. As you can see, he blends in with the sand, any of the dirt, any of the rocks. You don't see this snake, especially at night. It's almost invisible if you're not looking for it. Even if you are looking for it at night, they're hard to spot. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead. Release him right down in there. Release him right down into this hole. And naturally, via instinct, he should wanna just go whoop, right in there. Cause that's where he will feel safe and out of danger. Whoop. Doesn't always go too for there. there he goes. Right Damn. on in. Right in. Well, you can right. still, you can still kind of hear him under there. It's funny. Barely. It sounds like he's like way back here. Oh, way now. back there now. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Another rattlesnake freed back in the wild. We're almost. We're gonna hit 500 soon. So she saved. Almost 500 rattlesnakes. For free! For, what, you're not even getting paid for this? No, I do this for free. Oh I accept God. donations now. She, she, she's not even getting paid for this. If you want to support, <laughs> well, how, how can they give a donation? Um, I have a PayPal, uh, reptile relocation at outlook.com. Okay. You can donate through Facebook if too. If you want to donate uh, to, to Danielle's, Dan reptile, Danielle's relocation. reptile relocation, she's just going out here handling these dangerous snakes for free. Yeah, three years in a row. I don't want to charge people because it's free to kill a snake, and I understand that. And um, but most people want an option to get these snakes moved, and they will happily donate to my gas and my time before they will have a set fee that they'll have to pay to move these animals. And I'm happy to do it for free. I'll make my money other places. It's about the animals, for sure. This is what I look like all the time, hiking with a rattlesnake. So now I'm just looking for a creosote bush. Watch your ankles. Um, any sort of thick shrub that has a lot of uh, rabbit holes, bunny holes, all of that underneath. So it has a good hunting ground and shelter. Uh, I want to check out this little cluster of yucca. Oh wow, look at this rodent's nest. Perfect. Oh wow. So this is a pack rat nest. As you can see, this is a heavily. Well, how uh, do you know it's a nest? Because I just see, I just see all of this. So this is pack rat. They they literally make a mound, and this is just a huge nest for a pack rat. And you'll see them collect this choya too. I That's mean, that cactus we saw earlier. Exactly, and as you can see, like there's a solid tunnel going there, and there's also a really good one. These boys, well, be careful too. They're very, very Yeah, I just poked myself with them. Yep. And then there's a nice entry hole down there into the nest. And even right in there. That's probably where I'm going to go for. If I can clear it out enough to make sure there's no choya to... Oh my god, perfect. Into the nest. This is like as good as it gets for a Mojave relocation. And this plant right here is yucca? Yes. Extremely I pokey. I did it again. I know. I I have reached into these and gotten one to the face, and they are no fun. 
they hurt real good. So the Mojave rattlesnake gets a, an extremely bad reputation because it is one of the most venomous rattlesnakes in the U.S., if not the most. Um, they have two types of venoms, hemotoxin and neurotoxin. Um, and generally speaking, you're going down twice as fast because it's affecting your blood and your nerves. So this is a snake you especially don't want to get tagged by. But just like with all the other rattlesnakes, it's not going to come and chase you. It won't come out to attack you. Rattlesnake bites happen when we get too close, whether it's on purpose and most of the time on accident. I am especially careful handling this species of snake. Even though it's small, those venom glands still can pack quite a punch. And as you can see, the snake is not aggressive. It would act defensively, but not aggressively. The smaller the snake, usually a little harder to handle. It's harder to hook. Much harder to hook. And less place to grab. Yeah, like this is a very dangerous snake. This is one you don't want to mess up with. There we go. It's got to get into a good position. But as you can see, it's just curious. It doesn't want to come and bite me. It doesn't like that it's being held, but it's not coming to attack me. It's very curious what is holding me, but it's not coming to hurt me. And so now it's going to be a lot happier, though. A lot we're happier. Gonna do is we're going to go ahead and put them. Yes. The less amount of time I have to hold this species of snake, although my favorite, is better. So we're going to get him right down into there. Hopefully, he'll go right where we want him to. Good job. Into that rodent's nest. Right into the hole. Those rats have quite a surprise coming for them. I always like to make sure they get all the way in there so I know that they have total shelter from predators while I let them go. Oh yeah, couldn't have gone better. 